Hey everyone, I'm positively over the moon to see all of you. Like I couldn't be more excited. I'm just bursting with anticipation over being here with you guys. And it means so much to me that all of you guys came. Whew, sorry. Not sure where that burst of energy came from. Maybe I ate too many Sour Patch Kids this morning. Mm, you can never eat too many Sour Patch Kids. They're my favorite candy of all time. There are a lot of things to love about Sour Patch Kids, but the, probably the best part is the variety of flavors, and there are so many different ones, and each one brings something new to the world, or at least to my taste buds. They're the perfect little treat for this month while we talk about individuality. Individuality is discovering who you're meant to be so you can make a difference. You might be a sugary, sweet flavor like the watermelon ones, or maybe you're a spicy one like the fire ones. However, God made you. You are an individual. You're a custom creation. You're one of a kind. It reminds me of this video. Let's watch it together. It's time again for Retro Reel. On an ordinary day inside an ordinary park, high up in an ordinary tree, sits one extraordinary bird. Birdette had always felt she didn't quite fit in with the rest of the flock. They were happy to sit in their ordinary way and sing their ordinary songs. But she felt she was made for something more. Maybe she was made to be a gymnast bird and perform high acts of acrobatic amazement, to soar through the air and perform the Tweetchenko. Look at me, I can do the Tweetchenko. I'm a gymnast bird. But Birdette wasn't a gymnast bird, nor could she perform the Tweetchenko. We're songbirds, we sing, it's what we do. And they sang, but Birdette didn't feel like singing. She still felt like she was made for something more. But what could it be? Just then, she heard something. Someone was walking through the park. I just love wearing my fancy feather hat and walking through the park. It just makes me feel fancy. Birdette saw the fancy feathers, and it gave her an exceptional idea. She flew off and caught up with the fancy lady wearing the fancy feather hat. Upon seeing the feathers up close, she realized they were even more fancy than she could ever have imagined. I figured it out. I know what I was made to be. I was made to be a fancy bird. Once she had transformed herself into a fancy bird, she flew back to her ordinary tree to show the other songbirds just how fancy she had become. Who? Oh, what's a fancy bird doing here? I must take it back to the others. So the bird collector captured Birdette and took her to another part of the park, far away from her ordinary tree. There you go, in with the other fancy birds. You should feel right at home. But Birdette did not feel at home there, for she was not a fancy bird. Hey, you're not a fancy bird. You're a songbird who should sing the most beautiful songs. Do not be ashamed of who you are. Now go and sing. So Birdette flew back to her tree, which didn't look very ordinary anymore. She now knew she was made for something more. 
She was made to be an extraordinary songbird, and when all the birds worked and sang together, they could sing extraordinary songs. I am so thankful that I can trust God no matter what. That means I could run to God whenever I need help. I know that he'll help me be the best version of me, the me he created me to be. As Paul wrote in Ephesians 2.10, we are God's creation. He created us to belong to Christ Jesus. Now we can do good works. Long ago, God prepared these works for us to do. So let's sing and tell God that we will run to him. turn to you. You are my help when I need wisdom. You always see me through. To know that you're chasing after me makes me want to run to where you are. God, you make this journey worth it. I give you all my heart. When I don't know what to Six books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Matthew, chapter 9. 
verses 9 through 13. Everyone in the shore town of Capernaum knew who Matthew was. You may also call me Levi. But few people actually liked him. Well, that's rude. Truth is, Matthew had put himself in an awkward situation. He was Jewish, like his relatives and friends, but he chose to work for the hated Roman government. Just trying to make a living. Matthew was a tax collector for the Romans, and tax collectors were known to lie about the amount of money people owed. Five gold pieces. But but it was only three last year. Five, and not a shekel less. After collecting money, the tax collectors would keep the extra for themselves. Many of them grew rich by robbing the poorest people in their towns. In fact, tax collectors and sinners were considered to be the same thing. Hey, I work hard. But no matter how hard Matthew tried to polish his own image, deep down, he knew how others saw him. He heard their whispers as he crossed to the other side of the street to pass his booth. I do not know how that man sleeps at night. He's the worst, doing the Romans' dirty work. But one day, the crowds of Capernaum were full of different news. Did you hear about Jesus of Nazareth? The rabbi? He's not only a teacher. This morning, he made a lame man walk. That's just talk. My son was there. He saw it with his own eyes. The whole city was ablaze with the story. And even Matthew, who was tucked away in his tax collector's booth, was fascinated. Maybe the man just had a limp or something? Oh, no. This Jesus has real power. He cares about people. Well, maybe. Anyhow, you owe three gold pieces. Three? How are we supposed to eat for the rest of the season? Take it up with the governor. I'm just doing my job. I bet Jesus would have something to say to you. Next. Within a short time, the market became even more crowded. Jesus! Jesus is coming this way! From his booth, Matthew craned to see. Though he was curious, deep down, he had to admit that no rabbi would have kind words for him. I'm a fool. Even my own people hate me. Suddenly, the crowds parted. Just down the street, Matthew could see a tall man with a rugged face and piercing eyes. A group of common fishermen followed at his heels. It's Jesus. Matthew watched, waiting for the rabbi to pass him by. Instead, Jesus stopped right in front of Matthew's booth. Um, rabbi? Jesus looked directly at Matthew, reading every single thought in his heart. Nice day. Not too hot. Not too cold. Jesus kept his gaze fixed directly on Matthew's face. Come, follow me. Shocked, Matthew looked around. The crowd has fallen away. Who? Me? Jesus nodded. Matthew gaped. He had no doubt in his mind that Jesus knew every single thing about him, even everything he'd done wrong. But still, Jesus wanted Matthew to join him. Oh, well, yes. Matthew found himself leaping up from his seat and rushing out of his booth to join Jesus on the street. It's, um, nearly dinner time. Would you like to eat at my house? To Matthew's amazement, Jesus and his followers turned their steps towards Matthew's home. Quickly, Matthew sent out word to everyone he knew. Come to my house for dinner. Matthew, who had expected to eat alone, found himself hosting the most famous rabbi in town for dinner, along with a ragtag group of fishermen, tax collectors, and other outcasts. Jesus doesn't care what I've done. He thinks I can be better, that I'm worthy to follow him. But while Matthew rejoiced to discover his brand new identity, the city's religious leaders were horrified by what Jesus had done. They sidled up to Jesus' disciples. Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? You know, that's a great question. Jesus overheard the religious leaders and answered the question himself. Those who are healthy don't need a doctor. Sick people do. I have not come to get those who think they are right with God to follow me. I have come to get sinners to follow me. Preposterous. From then on, Matthew followed Jesus everywhere. With his own eyes, he had seen more of the things that Jesus had done than nearly anyone else. Near the end of his life, he wrote down all the stories he had witnessed and gathered so that others too 
to know Jesus. Before Matthew met Jesus, he was used to people thinking of him as a sinner. And honestly, it was the truth. Matthew had messed up just like all of us. Deep down, he was probably ashamed of the wrong things he had done. But something happened. He met Jesus, and Jesus chose Matthew to follow him. Jesus didn't focus on the wrong things Matthew had done. He saw the valuable, important person God created. When you believe and follow Jesus, you start to see yourself the way he does. He sees you as a valuable, special, one-of-a-kind individual God created. Our bottom line this week, knowing Jesus changes how you see yourself. Say that with me. Knowing Jesus changes how you see yourself. When Jesus died on the cross, he paid the price for your sins. When you put your faith in Jesus, you can be forgiven and set free. You can live with confidence, joy, and peace because you know how much he loves you. If you've ever wondered what it means to put your trust in Jesus, I'd love for you to come talk to me about it later. Send me an email, or you can talk with your parents, grandparents, or whoever you live with. Remember, everything changes when you put your faith in Jesus. You were created to have a personal, loving relationship with him. Thanks for joining us this week here on YouTube. Remember, you can check us out here every Sunday on YouTube for elementary, preschool, and middle school. You can also join us in person at the Children's Center on Sunday mornings, 930 and 1230 at 7522 South Greenwood Avenue. We hope to see you there.